What's up, guys? I'm here with my new friend, fellow YouTuber, real estate agent extraordinaire, knows all things under the sun with real estate, <laughs> uh, Javier uh, Vidania. He is now he's he's awesome. He messaged me a, a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to bring him on to specifically ask him, okay, man, this real estate market is insane. And if I'm looking to buy a home right now or any time in the next six months. Uh, how do I need to be thinking about this? Um, all of a sudden, these houses are getting pulled out from under me. I thought I was going to be okay, and now my money is not going nearly as far as I thought it was going to. What do I do? And so that that's what he's here to uh, to talk to us about. Let me just say, first off, man, thanks thanks so much for being here. I'm uh, I'm excited to have you. Yeah, I would I wouldn't say no everything. <laughs> I don't want to set the wrong expectation. I know uh, enough to get by, and more importantly. I've, I've seen I've seen it a few times now, so I know a general idea. But definitely a good starting off point for your educational journey. Totally, totally. So let me uh, let me jump in and just ask you, what in general do I need to be thinking about right now for buying a house that's different because of the market and what's going on? That maybe if I bought a house a year or two ago, I wouldn't have to maybe think about in the same way. I think. Uh, in its simplest form, we're shifting uh, markets. Um, the last decade, we've been begging buyers to buy with down payment assistance programs, sellers paying their entire closing cost amount. Um, it was it was an extreme buyer's market. And uh, we are going through a massive change where we went from being an average buyer's market to an extreme seller's market, to, to the a very extreme method as in, you know, there's four or five thousand listings when there's supposed to be ten or fifteen in the in the Phoenix metropolitan area, um, and it is so absurd that if you want a house, having a down payment and closing costs is not enough anymore. Shoot, I mean, three years ago you didn't even need closing costs. All you need is a down payment, a pre-approval, and maybe some patience and luck, and you'll find some a house that the seller would pay your closing costs for you. Now it's not even paying your own down payment and closing costs isn't just a necessity. You need to have extra money because the reality is there's a lot of new buyers in your marketplace, whether they're coming from out of state or wherever, um, that have a lot more cash that can either buy these properties all out full cash or they're putting an absurd amount of money on top of the list price and that money is being guaranteed by waiving their appraisal contingency and other means like that. So the main point is that it's going from an average buyer's market to just an extreme absurd seller's market. So from like a like a money perspective with either, you know, your clients or what you're seeing, how much money do I need to be able to to bring to the table? Is there a, a percentage down payment that's helpful and then plus all that other stuff? Um, are you seeing anything as far as uh, how much I need to be able to cover appraisal gaps or bring more money over top? Like if I'm sitting here and I've got a budget and I've set aside my money and I think I'm okay, how much more do I even need to, to be able to, to bring to the table? Well, to clear, to start off, I am in Phoenix, Arizona, which is the number one, I think, uh, increased uh, market in the country. So we've seen the most growth out of every city, I believe. So, you know, this is from the most extreme example. Um, maybe your market is similar, but not as extreme. Um, however, I will say that there's some uh, areas in California where it is not as extreme, but because it's a higher price point, it seems more extreme. Like people are for an $800,000 house offering uh, $80,000 more, right? which sounds crazy, but if you look at the price, you know, it's it's only 10%, right? So, um, I mean, your average down payment, if you're going conventional, which I always, you know, strive people to go, which if you are FHA or VA right now, unfortunately, a lot of sellers don't like that. They have so many offers to pick from and they're being told by the listing agent, hey, FHA and VA, you need a lower credit score. It's a government product. They're a lot slower. It's a lot harder to work with. Even though it's not necessarily true, that's what they're being told and they always favor conventional. So if you go conventional, you can go as low as 3% down, 5% down, 10% down, 20% down. Closing costs, if your uh, taxes are not as crazy, um, like here in Phoenix, an average house is one to three thousand dollars a year in taxes. If that's similar to yours, you might pay about six or seven thousand dollars of closing costs. So, but once again, that's not enough nowadays. Um, if you are fortunate enough to find a house that you're not competing against a cash offer who who goes forty, fifty thousand above price, um, or or someone who waives your contingency, um, we're having to do 
and I'm talking for my everyday buyers here, the buyers that are able to succeed without being going too absurd is they maybe say, hey seller, you know, we can't all together just waive our appraisal contingency. Um, so we can say, hey, in case it doesn't come in at value, the appraisal, we have an extra $10,000 we can give you, right? So if you offer 350 on a house that's listed for 320 and the appraisal comes back at 320, well, you say, well, you know, as long as we don't exceed 350, I can give you an extra 10,000, which means that you're buying the house for 320, but you're giving the seller an extra $10,000 on the closing table. And because you put that limit, let's say it comes in at 345, well, then you only have to come up with 5,000. But sometimes 10,000 is not enough. It's 20,000, sometimes even 50,000. So you're not necessarily guaranteeing you're going to give that money, but you're, in, in uh, other words, gambling it. You're saying, man, I'm going to roll the dice. And if that appraisal comes in at value, ooh, uh, you know, I won the jackpot. I don't have to come up with any extra money. But if I lose severely, it could hurt. And uh, the house will win indefinitely. Well, the house wins anyways because they're getting the house a lot more expensive. So if I'm looking to buy, what should I do or what can I do either in the contract or in my strategy to make sure that I don't, you know, get taken to the cleaners? I think the first step is it's like you're asking me, you know, hey, Javier, I want to I want to go, f I'm, I'm pra I learned how to box in my local gym. Um, what are some tips you can give me if I get in a ring with the UFC fighter, right? Well, it's like, yeah, I can give you some tips. You know, you, you just move a certain way, you find weakness, sure. But you should question if you're, you're, you could be in that ring first. You know what I mean? So if, and I get this still to this day, I get a buyer who calls me out of the blue, hey, Javier, you know, I'm looking to buy a house. Uh, I mean, I only have, I only have 8,000 in the bank hoping the seller can help me with some closing cost. Um, I want to buy in you know, this price range is really competitive. Can you help me? Um, I can give that person tips all day, but they should not be in this housing market. They cannot compete unless you get extremely lucky. And it is possible. That's why I say never say never. Unless you get extremely lucky, you're just not getting a house in this market. So I would say uh, before I give the tips, question if you're even prepared and how you question it. Go look at some houses. And when it sells, have your agent call, hey, what was the highest offer that you accepted? And you're gonna see real quick what are the types of offers that are winning. So um, so if you are defiant, you're saying I am gonna go in that ring and I'm gonna fight that UFC fighter, well, you have to you have to learn. You have to learn as you go. Um, you could do things like, you know, do appraisal gaps, you can do things creatively like, hey, you know, I'll make our inspection time shorter or you can say hey we won't ask for any repairs that uh, exceed five hundred dollars you know, all kinds of things like that but this is how you really learn when you're looking at houses you call and you figure out what beat you and once you get two or three houses you start getting the average of what kind of house equates to what kind of offers if you cannot produce those offers stop looking at those houses you're wasting your time you'll get lucky maybe but you're wasting your time Start looking at the houses that you are only second or third or fourth place of offers, that you were this close. So people get really defeated when they when they lose out on an offer because they were this close. That's a good sign. That means you're in the right direction. That means you are in the right area. You're looking at the right kind of house. Eventually, uh, you know, it's, it's a game of numbers at that point. One will land. And if you're, whatever is beating you, you start incorporating those into your offer if you can and one will land, everyone eventually gets the house. That's why I always tell my, you know, my agents that work under me is like, oh, this person's being annoying, whatever. Yeah, well, they're gonna buy a house with or without us. You know, those people will buy. So it's just a matter of being defined and having patience and persistence. You mentioned patience, which I talk about a lot on this channel. Um, how long are you seeing it take for a lot of your clients to, to actually win a house? You know, I know you're in the Phoenix area, which can be a little different, but you know, are people having, or, or the average person, are they having to put in offers on a bunch of different houses? Is it taking a while or kind of what's going on there? It depends how fast you have your come to Jesus moment. I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where people trust me right away. So they, they take my word for it. But like I have an example, uh, Doug and Luce, one of my favorite clients, they're currently under contract. They had a meeting with me. They had a reserve funds to be able to waive stuff like appraisals and whatnot. So they met with me and I said, this is the game plan. This is how it is. And they said, okay, we trust you. First weekend, they went to look at houses. They saw the second one, we made the right offer. And with a little luck and a little, you know, we got that house and it was the first time. So for them, it took a few days. Now um, I can have somebody, like I have someone currently right now 
that they haven't had that come to Jesus moment, even though I keep trying to talk to them about it. They're still looking at these extremely beautiful remodeled houses. We keep getting beat out by like these crazy cash offers and they just go, oh man, this market's crazy. Well, yeah, it is. Stop looking at these houses then. If you are in a position where you only have an extra 5,000 to do an appraisal gap, why are we looking at the cream of the crop? Why are we looking at those? So it, it's, it's a time frame of when you have your come to Jesus moment, which could take weeks, could take months, or if you're fortunate and very educated, like people probably are in this channel because they're watching you, then it could be pretty immediate. Now, once you have your come to Jesus moment, it's a matter of how lucky you get. It is all pure luck. The house that we got for Doug and Luce, they were, were in third place, uh, but we didn't know. Uh, we called and they uh, said, hey, yes, you know, we made, are you, we're accepting your offer, great. And then they send us the contract with a different name on it. And we're like, why is there a different name on this? Oh yeah, no, we actually accepted an offer first and they backed out, the second one backed out and we're going with you guys. Got lucky, pure luck, but we made the right offer. We wouldn't have been in third place because there was like 12 offers if we hadn't made the right offer. So um, it, it's, it's a magical process that really doesn't make sense or cannot really describe, it just sort of just happens. But there has to be these things that click first. Um, and there's, there's examples of people that get lucky, but for most of everybody, as soon as these things click, then you start the ball game. Then you can start playing in the major leagues. But for some people, they're so stuck that they never get past that point. There's a conversation here that I'm hearing you say of of leveling expectations. Basically, saying, that's, a, that's a much more fancy market, and educated way of saying it. Yes, me and my, my no, little simple I mean, but, brain. But right, like <laughs> it, <laughs> what a, what, yeah. <laughs> I love no, I love your come to Jesus meeting example because that's really yeah. what it is, right? It's saying, hey, look, you know, at this budget with this much you got to have this much extra to be able to negotiate yeah. here and so in reality we're not talking about these homes we're talking about these homes right and so if you're cool with that now now we can exactly. move forward i love it okay um so i i got one last question here for you and that is if i'm trying and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and maybe I've been saving a long time. Maybe I have, uh, you know, tried, but it just doesn't seem to be working out. At what point do you tell your clients, hey, maybe you should take a step back? Or at what point do, do I just need to say, listen, now's not the right time for me. Uh, and I might need to revisit this conversation. Um, and I know you and I, you know, we did a video for your channel where we talked about budgeting and saving for a house and how to, how to be able to actually make a plan to build up your savings to pull this off. Well, we talked about some of that over there, but, but over here, I'm kind of flipping the question, which is how do I know when I say, look, I just, I don't have it right now. Maybe it's that come to Jesus meeting where I say, okay, I'm not willing to lower my expectations. Um, when do I just need to say, okay, I'm just going to rent for another year and I'll revisit this later. It's if you get emotion out of it, it's very, it's a simple equation. Um, if you are consistently at the bottom of the barrel of the offers and you're still looking at that price range, then you need to adjust your price range or you need to have the position to make these better offers that are going to be in a higher in the barrel. We're not can look. We're not. We're not fortune tellers. We're not going to look in the future and predict a, a master, uh, you know, home home market crash or maybe things stay the same. I don't know. I don't care what happens in the future. We're talking specifically what you can control, right? Um, if you are at that point, you you know you have to adjust your home search and you go look at the houses that aren't as nice, right? You start adjusting that. If you aren't willing to do that then you need to take a step back until you get the things that you need to be able to compete. Either you have to have more money in the bank to throw at the seller, or quite frankly, uh, well, yeah, I mean, really, that's it. You have to just come up with the things that you're gonna need that you keep getting beat out at. Now, if it's the other side of the token and you are continuing to lose over and over, but you're like second or third place, then it is a game of patience and perseverance. You will get one eventually. Um, but you have to consistently be looking where you place with these offers. And if you and if you don't want to adjust and you are very like, this is the kind of house I want. I have the situation happening right now with a client. They've been looking at a certain price range and they're very persistent that they want a remodeled house. And of course, we're looking at these remodeled houses and they keep getting demolished. We're still at the bottom of the barrel and they feel defeated and demoralizing, even though we've had these conversations with them. Hey, maybe 
let's look at the houses maybe need a little work they don't want to so then at that point that's like well if we're going to continue to stay in this market then you should probably take a step back to save more money so we can compete at this market you know, people think that they're special and they'll get one that's just extremely lucky but sellers you know they have a heart but put yourself in their situation you get 20 offers and the cash offers 50k on your value of over, over the price you want and there's somebody else that has a beautiful family and you know no they don't care they, they want the money so um it's, it's simple as that it's um if you're not if if the house if you're very if you're already certain on the house you want the kind of area you want and you keep placing low figure out what's beating you and make a plan to get that or if you while you wait, maybe things adjust and things slow down, then you hit it again. But that's really that simple. Um, if you take emotion out of it, it's you can get pretty simple in that way. But you cannot learn if you don't know what's beating you. Um, you know, you cannot learn to stop touching a stove if you don't realize it's the stove you're touching. You have to be very aware, and yeah, it's a very educational process. So right now, realtors, in my opinion, aren't just people that open doors. They should be the ones that guide you. They're Sherpas. We're, we're, we're saying, hey, this, what is, you know, let's learn from our lesson. We got our ass kicked in this mountainside. Let's figure out another way to go and to see if that's the right way. We're going the right path. You know what I mean? So that's my take. Um, I hopefully love that's around. Is that the answer I love around it. there or did I not answer? It? That's no, that's exactly what I wanted. Cause that I'm, we're not here to sugarcoat it. That's what I love about your channel. You're not here to predict the future and you're not here to say you can get any house you want under any circumstance you want and do whatever you want. Because the reality is sometimes we have to have that that come to Jesus meeting and say, listen, uh, we have to save more money, right? There is no there's no shortcut or, or quick pill that we can take that's all of a sudden gonna, you know, make this thing uh perfect. So that that's exactly it. And that's what I love what you're doing on your channel, man, and just kind of shooting people straight, telling them like it is. And sometimes that means they don't always get to hear what they want, but they get to hear the truth, which is we gotta figure out what's important to us. And we got to save more money and bring it to the table if that's the game we want to play in. So, hey, thanks for so much for coming on. Um, anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to uh, hit on? People, seriously, go check out Javier's channel. If you are in the market for a home, interested in what's going on in the market, if you're even thinking about buying a house, check out his channel. He does a phenomenal job. I appreciate that. My big thing right now that's really frustrating me is these housing market crash videos are just everywhere. And they, they housing market update like three times a week. You know what I mean? Like... You know, it's like when you order something really great on Amazon and you keep checking every every 10 minutes, oh, maybe they shipped it early. Maybe this happened early. You can't control that. That is not in our control. And besides, if you're waiting, you're trying to time the market to buy for the perfect time, there's other people watching you. So whenever, you know, like if a stock starts dipping and everyone starts buying, it's going to go back up again. So stop trying to time the market. Instead, watch channels like Nick's to, instead of waiting for the market to be ready for you, get ready so that way regardless of what market you're in stop trying to time things um if you look at the data and you look at the numbers whether there's a crash or not what goes up must come down or you know it, you, as long as you own for a long time you can afford the monthly payment you will be okay i love it man thanks that's uh i couldn't have said it better myself so seriously thanks thank you <laughs> y'all go check out javier